myocardial infarction diagnostic tests and procedures. Cardiac markers are CKMB, creatinine kinase, myocardial muscle, troponin, and myoglobin. The complete blood count. The white blood cell increases with infectious process, inflammation of the heart, and myocardial infarction. Blood coagulation factors. Increase in factors can occur during and after an MI. Places a patient at greater risk for thrombophlebitis and extension of clots in coronary arteries. It's important to have an understanding of the intrinsic, extrinsic pathways, platelets, and fibrin. Serum lipids. Assesses risk for developing coronary artery disease. Homocysteine. Elevated levels may increase risk of cardiovascular disease. Highly sensitive C-reactive protein. This detects inflammatory process such as that associated with development of atherothrombosis. Microalbuminuria. Small amount has been a marker for endothelial dysfunction. Hypokalemia increases the risk for cardiac electrical instability, ventricular dysrhythmias such as PVCs, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and risk for DIG toxicity. Serum sodium levels decrease with use of diuretics and in heart failure. Calcium. Hypocalcemia can cause ventricular dysrhythmias, prolong ST and QT intervals, and cardiac arrest. Phosphorus level. Should be interpreted with calcium levels because kidneys retain or excrete one electrolyte inversely to the other. Magnesium. Low level can cause ventricular tachycardia and fibrillation. High level can cause muscle weakness, hypotension, and bradycardia. Blood urea nitrogen is elevated in heart disorders. Blood glucose. An acute cardiac episode can elevate blood glucose. B-type natriuretic peptide is released in response to atrial and ventricular stretch and serves as a marker for heart failure. Increased levels of the B-type natriuretic peptide, or BNP, markers for heart failure. Chest X-ray determines the size, silhouette, and position of the heart. Electrocardiography records the electrical activity of the heart, which is useful for detecting cardiac dysrhythmias, location and extent of MI, and cardiac hypertrophy, as well as effectiveness of the cardiac medications. Holter monitoring identifies dysrhythmias. A patient is instructed to resume normal activities and maintain a diary documenting activities and symptoms. Echocardiography. Evaluate structural and functional changes in the heart. The resting heart rate does not change with aging, so a decrease in heart rate would require a further investigation. Bundle bench frock and slight increases in PR interval or QRS duration are common in older individuals because of increases in conduction time through the AV node, the bundle of his, and bundle branches. Exercise electrocardiography testing, stress tests, studies the heart during activity and detects and evaluates coronary artery disease. A patient would be instructed to wear loose, comfortable clothing and supportive rubber-soled shoes. Digital subtraction angiography. This is visualization of the cardiovascular system using contrast dye, x-ray technique, and a computerized subtraction technique. Assess for allergies to seafood, iodine, or radiopaque dyes. Myocardial nuclear perfusion imaging includes technetium pyrophosphate scanning, thallium imaging, and multigated cardiac blood pooling imaging, and can evaluate cardiac motion and calculate the ejection fraction. Magnetic resonance imaging is a non-invasive test that produces images of the heart or great vessels through interaction of magnetic fields, radio waves, and atomic nuclei. Electrophysiological studies is an invasive procedure in which program electrical stimulation of the heart is induced to cause dysrhythmias and conduction defects. It assists in finding accurate diagnosis and determining a treatment. Electronic beam computed tomography scan determines whether calcifications are present in the arteries. Cardiac catheterization is an invasive test involving insertion of the catheter into the heart and vessels and obtains information about the structure and performance of heart chambers and valves and coronary circulation. Percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. A firm commitment is needed from the patient to stop smoking, adhere to diet restrictions, lose weight, alter exercise pattern, and stop behaviors that lead to progression of artery occlusion. The pre-procedure is to maintain MPO status after midnight. Post-procedure 
is to assess distal pulses in both extremities, maintain bed rest with the limb straight for six to eight hours, assess for bleeding and changes in vital signs. Laser assisted angioplasty is pre-procedure and post-procedure care is similar to the PTCA, percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. Coronary artery stents is used when acute thrombosis is a major concern post-procedure. A patient is placed on antiplatelet therapy for several months following a coronary artery stent. Atherectomy, post-procedure is to monitor for complications of perforation, embolus, and reinclusion. Transmyocardial revascularization uses a high-powered laser through the small chest incision in patients with widespread atherosclerosis. Peripheral arterial revascularization. Post-operative interventions include monitoring vital signs and monitoring maintenance of all body systems. Coronary artery bypass grafting. Occluded arteries are bypassed with the patient's own vessels. Pre and post procedure are similar to open heart cardiac surgery. Heart transplantation. Assessment of electrocardiogram can show two unrelated P waves because remnant of a patient's atria remains with the transplanted heart. A new heart rate would be approximately 100 beats a minute. Acute MI occurs when myocardial tissue abruptly and severely deprived of oxygen leading to necrosis and infarction develops over several hours. Myocardial infarction is a major cause of direct pump failure. With an MI, cardiac output and mean arterial pressure are decreased and afterload is increased. A left anterior descendant artery or an anterior or septal MI Another MI position would be circumflex artery, which is the posterior or lateral wall MI, and then right coronary artery, which would be the inferior wall MI. Risk factors are atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, elevated glucose levels, smoking, hypertension, obesity, inactivity, impaired glucose tolerance, and stress. Diagnostic studies, total creatinine kinase levels rise within three hours after onset of chest pain peaks in 24 hours after damage. The CKMB isoenzyme peaks in 18 to 24 hours after onset of chest pain and returns to normal in 48 to 72 hours. Troponin level rises within three hours and troponin levels will be evaluated for several days after the MI. The ECG, the ST segment elevation, inverted T wave or an abnormal Q wave. Assessment would include pain, nausea and vomiting, diaphoresis, dyspnea, dysrhythmias, cyanosis, and coolness of extremities.